Hey guys, Wolf's Garage here. So in this video, I'm gonna be replacing all the remaining rubber bushings on the rear subframe. Initially, I dropped the rear subframe mainly because I'm installing a new differential. While I was at it, I was gonna replace the metal subframe bushings and differential bushings. And since I have the whole entire subframe out, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna upgrade to the SPL rear arms because these have those solid metal bushings and just one thing led to another you know as i was looking at the rear subframe i'm going to be replacing the rear trailing arm the solid aluminum one from rev shift and since the rear trailing arm is out these bushings right here are made out of rubber i'm going to push these out and i'm going to replace them with ball joints by the way the subframe is upside down right now so the orientation might look kind of confusing this is the front this is the rear and it's upside down so for this control arm here that holds a spring the outer uh, ball joint right here is a sealed ball joint and it looks pretty stout and uh, this car only has 40,000 miles on it so I'm not going to bother replacing this one because I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference but the inner one right here is a just a simple rubber bushing so I'm going to push this out and replace it with an SPL part. Oh, and these, by the way, are really cool. These are the rear toe arms, and they come with these lockout pieces. So the rear toe arm, is, the stock one, is this one right here, which the weak point of it is the adjustment of the toe, which uses these, this uh, eccentric bolt right here which makes adjusting toe really difficult and finicky. So with this lockout piece, it's just gonna lock the position in place and you can adjust it by just threading in and out on each end right here to get your toe setting. So that's gonna make it much easier and more accurate. got the camber spring arm removed. I have full access to this bushing on the rear side to put the cup through. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this sucker out.
This is the old bushing, old trailing arm bushing versus the ball joint. Okay, I just found a trick on how to do this, and it's gonna seem really obvious, but I you know to me it wasn't. But as you can see, the bushing or the ball joint, when you press it in, it goes in crooked at first, and it's not as crooked as it was earlier because I already got it going. Uh, as you can see, the bottom portion right here is in more than the top, so the trick is. Once you start going in crooked, you have to take everything, this whole assembly apart and then reseat it so that this cup is pressing straight against the ball joint. And then the most important part is you need to lubricate, especially the portion of the ball joint that is having a hard time being pressed through. So be really liberal um, with your lubricant. In this case, I'm using anti-seize. So once you have everything reset so that the cup is sitting straight on the ball joint with the lubricant, it will start going through. And trust me, I've spent hours trying to press these things in um, and it took me this long just to figure this out. So hopefully if you guys are doing this, um, this little tip will save you a lot of time. Woo! Alright, so I got the ball joints in for the rear trailing arms. As you can see, the knuckle side subframe side so now that I have those ball joints in I got these nifty rear trailing arm replacements to replace the stock ones here you see the stock piece is very flimsy compared to this one made by RevShift these are made out of billet aluminum so these things are solid compared to the stock stamped steel arms. In terms of how much of a difference it's going to make, yeah, I'm not really sure. But you know, since I have this whole entire thing apart, I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade everything. Alright, so rear trailing arms are in now. Looking pretty good. So next I'm going to be installing the bushings for the inner spring arm. And this is the SPL part that I got here. The bushing is in the freezer right now, so I'm going to bring it out. Okay, so the bushing is installed. That was a lot easier than I expected. I think freezing the bushing made it a lot easier. And um, I emailed SPL to ask them on whether or not there's a specific orientation for the bushing, whether it should be pressed in from the rear like I just did or pressed in from the front. They told me it doesn't really matter. All right, so second bushing is installed. So now I have full sphericals on the rear subframe. So you guys haven't watched my previous videos. I did install solid subframe mounts, solid differential mounts. And then now I have the ball joints on the rear trailing arms and replaced the rubber bushing for the rear inner arm. The only thing I didn't replace is the outer ball joint on the knuckle for the spring arm. 
I was debating on replacing this, but this is already a sealed ball joint, and I don't think it's going to make a big difference if I replace it. And if I do decide to replace it later on, it should be easy because it's on the outer end. I don't have to drop the whole entire subframe for it. So yeah, I'm going to reinstall these spring arms now on both sides. Then I'm going to flip the subframe around and put these bad boys on. Okay, so camber arms are in. I did find one thing that was kind of strange though. This spacer right here that goes inside the bearing. This one specifically goes through as you can obviously see but it doesn't freely rotate. All the other threes rotate really smoothly so I don't know what's going on with this. Um, I'm gonna have to check with SPL to see if this is normal and or if I need to get a replacement. But just for the sake of moving forward with the project, I'm just going to bolt everything loosely up and I'm going to go ahead and install these guide arms now. to the exact same length as the stock ones. Let's go reinstall it. Alright guys, so I got all the SPL arms installed. Just got to do a little bit of tweaking just to make sure all the ball joints are straight. And again, I just need to follow up with SPL regarding the spacer and this inner bushing right here because it's not rotating freely. I'll let you guys know what they tell me. But yeah, I am super excited to uh, test these out. Uh, I haven't driven this car for months now, uh, but the thing is, even if I had the car ready, I wouldn't be able to drive it anyways because it's raining like crazy in Northern California and it just doesn't seem to stop. But next thing is I'm going to install a differential, get the subframe mounted back on the car, and I have a few more SPL arms I'm going to be installing in the front and then I'm going to align the car and it should be ready to go. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for more. I'll see you guys in the next one.